Hello guys and welcome to an Albion Online video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to succeed and thrive on the EU server launch. This video is meant for beginners and returning players as we're going to be talking about a few tips and advices on what you should do and what you shouldn't. Again, these are all personal recommendations and I hope they will help you. With that being said, let's get right into it. As soon as you finish the tutorial, the game offers you the very first important decision. That decision is where do you want to start. The game offers you different regions of biomes and these biomes offer you different types of gathering materials. Now this is very important, especially on a brand new server. Why? There's a lot of veteran communities, guilds, uh, players who are going to try to rush ahead of everybody, no matter the cost. We as new players, returning players, want to take advantage of that. And how are we going to do that? Well, by gathering. Gathering is going to be one of the best lucrative ways to make silver early on. No matter which gathering type of material that you choose to focus on, what matters is that you focus on it, right? So for example, I am somebody who likes hide. I like to do hide because it's a very fun activity. You kill, you hunt the monster, the, 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 sorry, the animal, and you get the hide and so on and so on. So for that reason, I would personally choose Bridge Watch to start on, which is the desert area. Here, every single region offers me a very nice type, an abundant type of hide, right? So I'm going to be all over the place getting all that hide. And then here comes the very first tip. Every single region has a royal city. Each royal city offers you, if you click right below the, 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 the castle with a beam light, there is like a little, like, you see that effect? Click right there, like right below it. And now it, that all throws you into the, uh, like the city map. So you can, you get access to see every single store, everything inside. But more importantly, right here on the top right corner, you have this little arrow. If you click that, you can see the local production bonuses. This applies to your island right here when you get access to it. And then below you have your refining bonuses and crafting bonuses. We're going to be talking about crafting here in a bit. But right now, gathering is very important, especially early on. So why are we mentioning this? As you can see, Bridgewatch is a hide city, but it's sorry, it's a, it's a hide region, but it's not giving me a hide bonus why is that well because the game wants wants you to to move a little bit and interact a little bit with other things but anyway this is, this makes it super exciting because then if i want to get a good yield from my hide where do i need to go well the place that i need to go is gonna be marlock i have to take all the hide that i that i acquire from all of the region here traverse on foot all the way to marlock and here I can craft it and get a 40% yield and then I can sell it. Now, these are just a small little tips and a, a small little things that you should know because it is important, especially early on in the game. Everybody's going to be wanting to craft. Every major guild is going to be wanting to funnel their crafters so they can reach that tier four, tier five and so on as soon as they can. Therefore, they're going to need all of your materials to be able to make that possible. Therefore, they're going to be buying it at whatever the cost they can. And this will allow you to have a very nice cushion of silver that will push you into being able to do higher tier uh, content, meaning lethal content. You don't want to spend most of your time on the yellow, the blue content, sorry, the blue zones, because it's not worth your time. Now, if you are a new player and you don't know exactly what I'm talking about, Albion Online is a PvP focused game. As you can see right now on the map, we are currently on a step across and it has a blue color. That blue color represents that in that area, it is a peace zone. It's a, it's a place where there is no conflict. The only conflict you can have, it would be against NPCs, mobs, animals, and so on. But you cannot fight against other players. Same thing continues around the city but then you notice that the color changes over here to slow tree plane yellow means that you can fight against other players but you will not lose any of your items now if you continue moving up ahead over here on the red zone you find yourself that you can actually die against other players and these players can loot 
all of your items, therefore you losing everything that you had on equipped and in your inventory, in exception on a specific items that are like bound bind to your character. Now, this is on the Royal Continent. This is the Royal Continent right here. If you go up to the north, you can access the Black Zones, this entire area. The Black Zones are accesses, uh, 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 sorry, the Black Zones are accessed through the royal uh, cities there will be a portal there that will take you to the black zones in the black zones there is no warning no nothing it's a free for all everybody can attack each other obviously if you're in an alliance or not well there's this whole other details but that's what the black zones is all about now this game is built around this kind of content you will not avoid it i mean you can but reality is that the most fun and the most activities are in there it, it, it's based on a very simple system of high rare, higher the risk, higher the reward. So if you want to have a very low risk uh, experience, then you're not going to be rewarded as much as people who will be doing the high risk, high reward content. Now, talking about high risk, high reward, let's also be careful about getting a lot of reward and not getting scammed for it. But what, what do you mean? Well, what I mean is, for example, we were just talking about refining here in Marlock because we get that 40% yield. So let's take a look. If I wanted to do this, I would have to approach any of all of these stores. Now, these stores are owned by players and the players are the ones that decide the prices on which the, ref the of the cost, pretty much how much is going to cost me to do things in their store. So if I look at this one over here on the left side, it's going to cost me 350 silver per 100 nutrition. Okay, this one 398, this one 398, this one 350, this one 9,999. Oh my goodness, 390, uh, 9,999 as well. What is going on? Yes, that's correct. People own these plots and they will put some absurdly high prices, which is ridiculous, and that will and you will not see it coming. Will you just spam the uh, the yes button and you will not realize? So be careful and make sure to always check the prices on everything that you see. It. This is a very funny example because right now this is happening on the open beta that is going on for the EU server. So. Again, I want you to remember these prices, 3, 3, 390, 394, 343, 350, so on. Let's go ahead and take a look at the EU server. So we are here now on the European server, the open beta at the moment, and let's take a look at the prices. So that is a 2,350, 3,000, 8,499, 2,849, 3,000, and I mean, compare these prices. Oh, look, a decent one. Kinda, <laughs> 900, I mean, it's much better than the other ones, for sure. But you can see just how crazy the prices can be, especially at the beginning. Now, this happens because the big guilds, the big communities, the veteran players will that know already a lot about the game will try to rush, acquire these plots and make a lot of money out of it. Now, we do have some good news. The, the developers are aware of this and they're coming in with a change on uh, with a change of this system that will be already in place by the time the server launches. Why am I bringing all of this up? Because I am sure that you guys are have been watching a lot of videos and guides out there where a lot of people are telling you that you should not try crafting because crafting will be only by the big guilds, the cartel, and all of these people who will have control of the market, la la. And well, I'm here to tell you that is not correct. Crafting is in fact one of the best ways to make money and is something that you should definitely do. So when you pick that gathering resource that you want to focus on, make sure that that gathering resource that you're going to be uh, getting and refining and everything is part of the recipe that you need for whatever weapon or whatever armor you choose to craft on. And when you actually decide to craft on uh, that, that specific thing that you want to craft on, make sure that is something that you focus on is better to, for example, let's say that I want to make, uh, I don't know, uh, let's take a look at something simple uh, here, uh, cloth cowls, right? I want to make a bunch of cloth cowls instead of going ahead and making, you know, all of them because I get all these mats, you should try and focus on one 
only one. And why is that? Because the more you focus on one single thing that you constantly craft over and over and over and over and over again, you get these passive bonuses. You get plus 30 bonus to focus cost efficiency while crafting all cloth coals, blah, blah. And you get all of these bonuses that the, the more you get that, the more spec you have on that crafting later on, on the long run, it's going to return so much money back to you. So try to focus on one thing. That is my personal advice. You do what you want, but this is my advice. Now, I'm bringing, uh, I'm really saying all of this because it, it frustrates me to see a lot of misinformation out there on YouTube. So hopefully this motivates you to explore the wonderful crafting system that Albion offers. I used to play a lot of NA and I never got to do crafting because uh, a lot of people told me that it was not worth it, blah, blah, but it is 100% worth it. And I personally will be a crafter in the game. All right, moving on, enough with the life skills, enough with the gathering and so on and so on. If you are a more of a PVP, PVE player, what can you do? to make sure to have a proper economy and to survive pretty much out there in this harsh world. Again, all of this information I just gave you guys about gathering, crafting and all of this is because the main thing you wanna do, especially on a new server, is to have a stable economy. And this, in my opinion, is the best path to be to have a stable economy. Any gathering type, anything that you choose to gather to do, uh, uh, in in that specific type of content you know what i mean when i say that is gathering overall and crafting that will guarantee you make you money and you'll be in a very good footing especially early on now if you don't like that kind of content what can you do well let's go ahead and talk about that so now let's start with the pvp activities that will help you well get some uh, economy and stability at the beginning of the server. So the very first thing that you need to know, again, like we mentioned at the beginning, is that the game works on a, according to the risk, you will get rewarded, right? So the higher the risk, the more reward you will get. Therefore, obviously for PVP and PVE content, if you wanna get uh, a, a stable economy, a lot of silver, a lot of possible items that you can sell, uh, like uh, artifacts and stuff like that, then you will definitely want to be on the black zones, which is again, this area here on the north, uh, all of this area that you can access through the royal cities. Now, if you are new to the game, I will highly recommend you to start on a yellow zone. A yellow zone is a place where there is PVP, but you don't lose your items if you get attacked and the rewards are not that bad. And a very good way to get started would be with solo dungeons. So let me show you how that looks like. You're gonna <clears throat> you're gonna have to explore the map a little bit till you find this looking uh, rock <laughs> with this glowing stuff. This is a solo dungeon. What you wanna do is go ahead and oh, well, somebody probably access it. Let's go find another one. So here we are on a solo dungeon. All you gotta do is interact with it and you're gonna be thrown inside. The solo dungeons is a simple linear uh, um, dungeon where you just gotta go and kill all the mobs you can. Now, once you are in, in a solo dungeon, there's always the possibility, especially on a lethal zone, that being red, black zone, or even here on the yellow zone, for you to get invaded. Now. It's common knowledge uh, th that once you enter a dungeon, after a certain amount of time, they disappear. That time mean 90 seconds. A little piece of advice will be that as soon as you enter, you can go ahead, click top right, and log out. As soon as you click that, it will give you a countdown, and you can have an idea of how much time has passed before you go on ahead and continue on to the, uh, to the dungeon. In the actual red zone and black zone, the countdown is 300 seconds. So you get an idea of how many, you know, the moment the 90 seconds has passed and now you are safe to do the dungeon without having to worry about anybody uh, jumping into your dungeon and ganking you. Now the dungeon is super easy, super fun to do, and is, I believe, a introduction for players to kind of see how the PVP works, sorry, the PVE 
uh, content of uh, Albion Works, and it's a great way to get started and acquire some fame and silver. This will definitely help you out, uh, uh, get that economy uh, uh, stabled, and so you can go ahead and start affording more sets so you can go into higher and more difficult content. Well, that was solo dungeons. Now, if I, I am honest to you, I wouldn't really recommend them as much. Why? Because there is other solo content that you can do, like mists, which are these little flying things around that are really much better due to a couple of things. But more importantly, the problem with solo mists is that you have to go out there to find them and acquire them, right? So you gotta go running around on the open world to find that solo dungeon. The problem I have with that is that at the beginning of the game, I really do recommend you to risk your equipment and go to the black and the red zones because you will get the better rewards there, that being fame and silver from the mobs. Even just killing mobs outside on the, on, on the black zone gives you so much silver and so much fame. I'll give you guys an example here in a little bit. But again, the risk is that you are on the open world and there is always some chance of encountering other people or worse, encountering a Zerg, a massive group of people, a guild that are ganking early on and that is going to be very annoying and will frustrate your experience. But how can you do, you know, solo content with a lethal risk without having to worry much about this? Well, that would be mists. The best thing you want to do if you're going to be focusing on PvP and PvE, is jump in a mist as soon as you can, because in here you want to be able to unlock Brazilian. Brazilian is a new city content that it was recently created, added into the game, that you unlock it by doing activities here. But to be able to unlock it, you need to be able to have, sorry, you need to have 50,000 reputation with Brazilian. Now, it's very easy to acquire that reputation. All you got to do is kill uh, mobs here on the zone and do different activities in the map. So if you look at the map, you're going to notice there's like these square looking places and these square looking places are actually little encampments that you can do. So I'm going to go ahead, jump in this one and do the encampment. You can see on the top right that it tells me you need to have down that amount of, uh, of reputation to be able to open, first of all, the chest, right? And, and then you're, you're, you're going to be able to finish the zone. Right now, we are on a yellow zone, so I'm not risking anything. So, so again, this is just for the example. But you can see I'm already halfway there, super fast, super easy. And you want to be doing and spamming these activities, uh, these type of activities in, in Brazilian early on on the game. Definitely, it's going to be super, super worth it. So let me finish it. So as soon as I kill the last mob, it says objective complete, and it allows me to open these little uh, chests. The chest gives me a little bit of silver, a little bit of fame, which is very, very nice and very welcome. Now, these little runes are the things that I was talking about before and when I mentioned artifacts. Runes are things that are going to be that are appearing a lot on early on because there is nothing in the world that can be dropped. Meaning, uh, there's a system in the game called the Black Market. The Black Market is on Carleon, is a royal city. I will show you guys here in a bit. And in there, you can sell eight items to the world. Basically, the world is telling you, please sell to me because I want to drop items when you kill mobs and these items that, that you receive when you're killing mobs are crafted by players and is a very profitable way to make silver. So, so because of that, uh, at the beginning of, of a first server, nobody has crafted items. Therefore, the server can only drop you silver bags, fame and runes. Another way to quickly acquire that reputation that you need from uh, for Brazilian is <laughs> releasing these little abyss looking things. You get that reputation right there. So let's take a look about those two activities, how much reputation we gain. So we were at 15,000 and now we have 17,000. So not bad. I did some tests on yesterday's stream and we calculated that it should take you about two to two hours and a half to be able to unlock Brazilian once the server uh, goes live. So it's definitely a 
a, a, a good goal to have as a solo player that does not want to encounter Zergs and can do just uh, solo content, farm in peace without being annoyed by anybody. Obviously, you will be annoyed by an another solo player, so be very smart on your builds, what you're going to be taking. In fact, I'll be working on early on builds uh, video that should be coming out tomorrow or the day after. So you guys can see all the options and the option that I will personally be taking, which is in fact this one. I'm going to be taking the dagger and the torch. It's going to be a ton of, a tons of fun. Now, <clears throat> now moving on, I, go, I went back to the NA server to show you guys the other option for the PvP, PvE focus players that want to do silver, that, that want to do a lot of fame, which um, I'm sure you probably already heard of which is just grinding the open mobs in the black zone area. Yes, they do give you a lot of fame. Yeah, they do give you a lot of silver and it's definitely worth doing it, especially once the server is fully out because right now in the open beta, if you try it, it's, there's so many people everywhere that it's very hard to really do it. It's just, it's just crazy. But here on an already established server uh, with the entire black, black zone already open, it's way safer because there is way more space to be able to run to, move around to, and so on and so on. So let me just put some equipment and I will show you just how does this farming look like and what exactly are you looking for as well. So now that we're ready for to explore the black zone and start grinding your fame and your silver, you can interact with this little uh, bubble here. And this actually makes you uh, invisible and you can also not get any damage from the from anybody. So you can read it up here. Invisible, immune to damage, and silence, right? So this will allow you to be able to go out there without anybody spotting you and, you know, search for those mobs that you need or go across an entire region without being disturbed by any ganker or anything whatsoever. And you can start yourself. Uh, you, so you can start, uh, like, a grinding at peace and, and, and so on. So this is a perfect example of two different types of open world mobs. You can see how these ones are very simple, nothing crazy, right? And they're like just right there. I cannot do anything because I still have the buff. Now I am silenced. I can actually just do, I cannot do anything still till, till that silence disappeared. But you can see both mobs look different. And this is exactly the kind of mobs you want to look for. So we're going to go ahead and kill this... Uh, these are uh, two mobs and you can see that it gives us uh, a little bit of, uh, of fame a little bit of uh, of silver 1000 silver right there and like 2000 fame right so not not that crazy not that bad either let me uh opa. let me uh just uh food and uh, like uh drink my food here real quick and then you guys can see exactly how different it is opa. Uh, that guy just want to make sure we're not disturbed <laughs> Sorry. And then we can go ahead and uh, deal with this guy here real quick. Make sure you don't get hit by by their uh, abilities because they do hurt a lot. Oh, go okay. ahead. Oh, what an annoying guy. <laughs> He's going to take my mob that was working hard on. Here we go again, another great example of what it looks like, how these mobs in particular, the ones that you want to be looking for, actually look like. So that's exactly the kind of mob that you want to find. So this mob right here that we're going to kill just give us uh, 4,000 um, uh, 4, uh, uh, fame and like uh, 1,000, what's the name, um, silver, right? So let's take a look at how much this one will give us because it is different, has that like little yellow effect on, on it and it's kind of like more special than the other one, right? So let's take a look and boom, it gave us 11,000 and 2,000. So you can see it gives us a little bit more and that's the kind of mobs that you want to be looking for. Also, if you see like a little cluster of three, four mobs, you can definitely take them on as well. It's definitely going to be very, 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 very good uh, a fame. Now, these are just uh, very small examples. There's some other mods that give you way more fame than, than these mods. <laughs> this guy is trying to gank me, so I gotta run. <laughs> Alright, that's that's what you need to be careful about the open world. Look at that. We got another special mob right here. 
maybe we can go ahead and take it. But yeah, you got you gotta be very careful with uh, with people around you. Everybody is gonna be wanting to attack you. Obviously, this is already established server. It's not gonna be the same in the uh, launch in the open. Sorry, <laughs> in launch on the EU server. But again, these are the mobs like I mentioned earlier. Sorry about my dog in the background that you wanna be going after. Now, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I gave you guys pretty much the basics. Um, th there's so much more content out there we can talk about. Corrupted, Hellgates, uh, Duo Mists, uh, Avalonian Roads. There's so much more out there that it is super hard to fit everything on a single video. You also have the Faction Wars. Um, I want to talk about all of them. If there is anything that you would like to talk to, uh, you would like me to talk about specifically in detail, feel free to leave it on the comment section below. Now, before we finish the video, there's another tip, a very important one, that what I would like you guys to to know. So the, let's go ahead and give you an example. Don't ever, ever quick sell <laughs> or quick buy. I mean. I'm not saying don't ever, but don't make it something that you always do. Quick selling will lose you so much money. So if I go ahead over here and do quick sell, uh, you can get an idea of the prices. Okay, uh, la, la, la. you know, uh, what should I sell, what I shouldn't, so on. I, I, it will tell you it's important that you take a look. It's important that you take a look and make sure that whatever it is that you sell, is always profitable, especially at the beginning of the game, and especially your materials you've been gathering or refining. If you want to sell them and you click quick sell, somebody is going to be abusing the system, putting a, a, a buy order of very, very, you know, very low compared to the actual value of the material. So make sure to always make uh, sell orders. So put sell and you adjust it to whatever it is that you think is worth. You can adjust a little bit more, like you can put here, like, you know what, I don't, I don't agree with this price. I want to put it on 60,000 instead. And you create and you do it. That is way better than just quick selling and stuff like that. Take care of your money. Make sure you make smart decisions by checking every price everywhere. And that's the best way to approach it. Same thing with the uh buy orders you can create a buy order of whatever it is that you want to buy let's see hide for example and i say i want to make a buy order of medium high let's make a buy order the average is 42 but you know what i'm greedy i want let's say i don't know 1000 of these and i want to buy them all below even more i will i want 35 and i'm gonna put it there create yeah, and then in a couple of days, maybe somebody will sell it to me. And that way you keep on making, uh, you know, profit by taking advantage of people wanting to quick sell, right? I mean, I'm telling you, <laughs> that's like an, an ironic advice, but nevertheless, be very careful with what you buy. Be very careful with what you sell and how you do it. And I hope this video was helpful. Uh, if you did found it helpful, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. Also, leave a comment section. Uh, sorry, leave a comment on the section below about what would you like to see next. I'm gonna be talking every single topic. I'm gonna be talking about mists. I'm gonna be talking about corrupted dungeons. I'm gonna be talking about all of these things that you can do before the game launches, so you are 100% prepared and full of knowledge about the game so you can just have an incredible start on the EU launch. Anyway, I am Toto Torres, it's been a pleasure, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.